Welcome to the Picky Nerds. In a series we're about to make a playlist for. 15 highly played commander cards, but are they worth buying? I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. We're still doing daily content, and you can still go to the affiliate link in the description. It's not too late. It never expires. Go there, buy cards, check out, and we get a kickback on the order free of charge for you for the kickback. You don't spend any extra money. Easy as that. And we're fastly, quickly, what uh, synonym for fast. Rapidly. Rapidly approaching 50K. If you want to help celebrate that 50K, PO box in the description, send whatever silly thing you want to us. We're going to go to the post office, get it, and open it in front of this camera, and as long as it's PG, you'll see it. And just like that, we're already into the video. Already. We got 15 here. We went into our Discord, so if you're not there, head over. We went into the Discord, asked, hey, what cards do you want to know if we would buy or not? And they sent in a bunch of suggestions. A couple of things I want to say before we jump into the first one. This, obviously, we're saying people who have some budget um, aren't super restricted, and obviously every almost every single one of these cards maybe there is one or two exceptions is going to be worth it if you both have the budget and that it's the right deck like that's always going to be true but we're going to take a more general like, a general broader stance rather than saying if it's this deck yes or no it's just hey in general would we spend the, this amount of dollars to get this card the first one submitted by melon ashnod's altar currently sitting at ten dollars for me this is a resounding yes. I think this is one of the best sack outlets in the format. A lot of infinite combos you can pull off, but it, whether you're playing fair, pumping mana into axe spells, or going infinite, I think this is just a great card. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to use this card. Like you said, the infinite combos are off the charts. There's probably there's probably literally hundreds of infinite combos that use Astronaut's Altar. Definitely thousands. Uh, you think thousands? Definitely. Wow. Well, I think I think hundreds for sure. Regardless, ten dollars is an easy yes for this card. It feels like this card will continue to creep up until it gets another reprint. It had a nice uncommon one. Took it down to a nice two, three dollars for a while, but it's just creeping back up there. This is a great card for any any aristocrat deck. Absolutely loves this card, so I'm in for no, it. No, at ten dollars, I don't feel bad at all buying this. I just, agree. This is an amazing card. Now, how about the second one? It is suggested by Vigorat, and it is Crucible of Worlds, currently sitting at $31. This one is really hard. I think it's just a no overall, because most decks, it's just not going to be a strong enough, good enough card. It is a source of card advantage. You play it, and if you have enough fetch lands, you can guarantee you'll have that fetch land. Sure, you're always going to be essentially drawing a card. See, for me... It's, I'm only counting this as card advantage if you don't have lands in your hand. Because if you have a land in your hand and you just play one from the graveyard, it's just kind of meh. You're just, it's a wash. You didn't really get anything mm -hmm. out of it. You already have a land, so like the opportunity cost is nothing. You can just play one from your hand. So unless this is chaining some kind of strip mine effect or obviously in a landfall deck, you just, I just have no interest. I, I don't want to play this at all. It's a high synergy. It's, this is a high synergy piece that most of the time is just not worth it. Yeah, you I'm going to say no. It's incredible in your landfall decks and not anywhere else. Right, exactly. So definitely a no on Crystal no, of Worlds same. in general. Number three, Bri Brian is brutal. That's what it is. Mind's Eye, $10. Mind's Eye is a card I feel like we used to talk about it a lot more, but we haven't talked about it in a while. And I think Mind's Eye is awful. Uh, I also think Mind's Eye is awful. I think the one of my favorite things to do with this is just to look at rates. Um, you start at five mana, as and then you draw one card. Now you've done six, two cards at seven, three cards at eight, and we're just and these number these numbers don't get better. I understand it. It kind of like gives you a place to do it. And this used to be like premier for white card draw, because I, white was really really bad at card draw at one yeah, point. It's a lot better now. I, I'll play something like Search the Premises every single time, even though the card's not great. I think it is so much better than this. Yeah, what, what's the other one? Like, uh, Thorough Investigation, is it? Is that when you attack, you investigate too? Yeah, those cards, I, I just like those cards so much more than this. And I understand, still the investment's a lot, but at least you get a permanent, and you can do other things with that permanent. Yeah, I don't, I just, I'm not interested in a five mana sits there. You know, it's a five mana nothing. And then you have to wait for the triggers to get actual abilities. And I understand this can be crazy. I think, in general, it's just never going to be worth your time. Even, when, even in the games where you run away with it. It could have been something else. And I just the opportunity cost is bad, is high. Like yeah, that, like you said, if this is this is one of those things where if you pay five mana and it dies, it sucks. It sucks so, so bad. It's just I mean even in the late game, it's not even that crazy. Like everybody's in top deck mode, you know, untap with fifteen mana. It's like all right, mind's eye, go, and then it's like all right, I'll draw one card. Hope I don't have an answer for it. Yeah, I will say this. Um, 
the cards, it is rare, unless the card is bonkers, like Smothering Tithe or Ristic Study, that we want to play a card that does have that has zero impact upon right, playing. Right, exactly. And this is so rare. Yeah, this is so. This one just not even not there. Just doesn't make it. No, thank you. Uh, Vegan Wiener, what suggests Cavern of Souls, seventy seven dollars for the best tribal land ever printed. Yeah, it's really sad because yeah, tribal decks probably want this, but for seventy dollars, I'm not even in for tribal decks. It's it's too much. And the different unless you're playing in this like. Super counter spell heavy meta where you're guaranteed to play against counter spells every single game. I don't want to spend seventy seven dollars. That's too much. No, I I am not interested in this for anything. This is like once your tribal deck is ready to go and you've got it one hundred percent optimized. And you're like, I'm gonna ready to pick up that cavern of souls. Sure, anything less than exactly one hundred percent optimization. No, you don't need this card. Adrian. You'll barely notice most of the time. Sometimes it'll be like relevant and. It just so many times it will not matter. I don't think it's it's that important. No, I I don't either. Like you could just you could easily pass on Cavern of Souls. Yeah, exactly. And you can make your land base a little tighter to be casting your non-creature spells as well. Which, I mean, obviously Cavern of Souls is better than that, but it is an upside to not playing Cavern of Souls. At least there is an upside to not having it. Yeah, you can cast your non-creatures more reliably. So number five, what is it? Well, Shade with a Y suggests the Me Hook Massacre, the lowest market price. On TCG Player is $32. That's crazy. This is an Aristocrats piece like a Zulaport Cutthroat, like a uh, Blood Artist. There is a, there's a bunch of these. I'm, I'm the All those other versions that I just listed are between maybe 50 cents and $3. I'm not even close to wanting to spend $32 on this. I This is a resounding no for me. This is the easiest decision of my whole career. Just wait till it's out of standard and pick it up for like two cents. This card is hot garbage outside of standard and commander. It's just, it's Black Sun Zenith is not an efficient rate. I don't think anyone's really putting Black Sun Zenith in their deck and feeling super great about it without synergy. This is the same thing. I, You don't desperately need this additional aristocrat slash board wipe. It's really not that crazy. It's just another interchangeable piece of the aristocrat's puzzle. A deck with it. And a deck where you sub it in for Zulapur Cutthroat are about the same power level. The, the, yeah, the margins are so small. And yeah. that's that's the thing about, like you said, like we're saying, is it is just too tiny of a margin to spend $32 on. There is a million of these. If you, even if you want it on an enchantment, you can just get uh, Bastion. B- Bastion of Remembrance. I mean, you don't get the board wipe side. Now, what, I don't even think it is necessarily a board wipe all the time because how much mana uh, do you have lying around? There's a potential board wipe. Right. Like, like, that, that is an upside to this card. Don't, well, yeah, like, potential, but it's not always a board wipe. It's not like Day of Judgment and Zulu Park. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, don't don't take us wrong. We think this card is good. We do not even think it's close to $32 good, though. Yeah, it might be one of those, like, good, not great. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, suggested by Bear Blunt. This is Pattern of Rebirth for $4. And this, uh, much like uh, Meadow Massacre being a resounding no, this is a resounding... Yes, this card is incredible. It just, it, it can be four mana if it resolves on the creature and I have a second outlet, I win. Or it can just be when my creature dies, I get the best thing on my deck onto the battlefield. The auras are risky. We we don't play a ton of auras because you have to take the risk of, all right, I'll target my guy and then the chance of getting two for one. And that, and that, that can hurt a lot. But, but this is so worth getting two for one sometimes because when you don't get two for one, you just cheat so much mana. It's great. Yeah, well, you know, let's even if you got two for one, let's say 20% of the time, I'm still all in on this card. And that might change the math for some other cards, but not this one. This is one of the best cards in the format, and I really don't understand why more people aren't playing it. If you want to play high power, this is like an infinite combo card. You can just win the game if you resolve a pattern of rebirth, uh, especially with like Boomweaver Giant and even going to find like Protein Hulk. And in any other power level, you find your best creature. You just need to sack all it. Any deck that can sacrifice creatures, this card is perfect. Yeah. It, $4 is just so easy to say yes to this card. It's so weird to me that it is so cheap considering it only has two printings, I think. It's just amazing. Like, I really am con- confused on this one. Yeah, uh, me too. So, yeah, Pattern Rebirth, yes, get it. It's an awesome card. Yeah. Next, suggested by It's Danny Boy, uh, Descendant's Path, $10. I don't think this card is even good. I think the the count you have to be playing in your deck of creatures of shared types has to be like fifty, and, and that is it's a coin flip now. I mean, now it's a coin flip. I I'm not interested in this card. I'm not even close. I, this isn't a card. I don't. This is a card I don't think I would put in my decks 
if it was a dollar. Right. Which we're, we're saying I don't think this card is playable. Like it's not a, it's a card I would ever play, let alone for ten dollars. So obviously it's a no for me. The fact that you can cheat it into play is very far offset by the fact that you're not triggering this all the time. You're you're triggering this, let's say, forty percent of the time, maybe. And even if you do trigger it, it could be a one drop, a two drop, something that barely matters. This has this has given me Frexian Arena vibes, and I'm really not a fan. If you've got like ludicrous amounts of ways to cheat your top card or something, maybe. But for for these tribal payoffs, I'm much more fond of like Herald's Horn, where it has a static effect. It adds mana, you know, because it's going to reduce the cost. And then every once in a while, you draw a card. But that's gravy. Yeah, I think that there is just so many good tribal payoffs, especially depending on color and such, that you this is just it's too far down on my list. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's not on my list. Uh, well, it is on your list. It's it might be the bottom of the list. If but my list on... is cards that are tribal decks that I would play, it's not on my list. Okay, that's fair. But it, it's supposed to be just tribal payoffs. Oh, uh, my list is all tribal payoffs. Yeah, all tribal payoffs. It's just it's near the bottom, and there's just too much above it that I don't need to touch this. I think. Yeah. So definitely a no. Number eight, submitted by Galux. It's Dark Confinant, twenty-eight dollars. That's the lowest I've ever seen this card in my head. Dark Confinant is always cost at eighty dollars because I remember being a kid and like striving to buy one and like scraping together all my trades and store credit and stuff. But now it's only twenty-eight. It is not really a card I'd recommend. I don't think this is a card that is like a near CDH. Like when you're really tuning your deck and you're starting to get to the point where you get to the peak of synergy. And that's kind of like the peak of where this channel is, where like you're the highest power with the most synergy. As soon as you start going down on synergy because your power level is going up even further, that's when Dark Confidant starts to shine and the speed of the games goes way up. And I'm just going to say no for, for the low to mid power. Yeah, it's it's it reminds me, it's, a, it's worse than <clears throat> Sylvan Library, which is a card that we don't suggest that often unless you're doing very high power. It's a similar thing. Yeah, where you're turn one, two, and three are the most important. That's like CDH levels. You're approaching very high competitive commander. Then when your two drops matter a poop load, yeah, Dark Confidant is going to be great. One, it's not going to make you lose a lot of life. And you just need that two drop to get you card advantage to put you in a position to combo off quicker. Yes, and some CDH, I'm not saying it's a CDH staple, and a lot of decks don't play this card, but mm -hmm. it's a much higher power when you're like literally, I hope that made sense what I said, but like, you know, as synergy goes up, power increases, but when you hit, you hit a peak, you can't go past it. Now, all of a sudden, now you're going to be better off cutting things for, like, spell pierce, you know? And you just get to the point where the games are super high pressure and two drops get better. Yeah. They're confident to know. But it's still a no. Regular commander, mm-mm. Yeah. Too, much, too much money for a Phyrexian Arena. <laughs> Number nine, Valetis says, what about Shadow Spear Cherries? It's $18. $18. This one's so interesting to me because I remember it was $10, I believe, a couple <clears throat> months ago, and we talked about it, and I was all in on it. Now it's a lot more interesting. It's hitting a price where it's like, is it worth it? It's such uh, a good card. It is a very good card. And I think uh, I think it is worth it. This card is very, very strong. I think Lifelink Trample is such a good combo. Plus, it just has this other ability to let you kill gods. I'll take, I mean, that's gravy. Even without equipping. Yeah. It's just it's like that's just gravy. Like it's not like it's not the ideal thing for this guy. But it's like sometimes you just get to kill a threat you could never kill. Oh, well, they have a hexproof thing. No, they're gone. Yeah, I I really like this card. And at eighteen dollars, I think I'll still play one. It again, you do need a deck for it. Don't just be like Shadow Spear for my generic deck. Boom. It's Actually, not an auto include. To be, but to be fair, also if you do do that, it's still going to be pretty strong because this card is just generically strong. Yeah, the floor is decent on this card, but I just you can't afford to put this in your deck if you're not like a Voltron deck. So already, I think, when we're saying Shadow Spear, we're kind of in this niche of certain commander decks when we talk about generality. So I'm going to say yes on Shadow Spear. It is a very good card. Just don't throw it in every deck. Yeah. It also, right now, it is being played. Its its price is so high because of modern. Yeah, it's a modern card. Well, yeah. My, I mean, Urza Saga did it. I mean, this was an okay. This isn't, like, never seen play in modern at all. Yeah, the Urza Saga and then also the Stoneforge Resurgence. Now it's like, okay, uh, Shadow Spear is a really good thing to get. Yeah, Shadow Spear is awesome. I like it for Commander. $18, I'm in. Next, Puddin suggests Veil of Summer, and it's $6. We sit in a place where we talk about, when we talk about your Pyroblast. Your color hosers. Your color hosers. And it's only hitting one color, we're out. Veil of Summer hits two colors, and it is two of the most popular colors it's it blue is the most popular color in edh and then green black are, and blue and green are the top three yeah the top three and this is two of the top three colors i'm super in the two for one potential here is 
just through the, I mean, you don't lose anything. Nope. When you get the value off of this character, you don't lose anything. And sitting on the table and maybe not seeing one color, yeah, totally reasonable. Not seeing two colors, very, very low. Yeah, I've seen the, oh, hey, there's no blue at this table, but there's black. And it's not, now there also is, not always will they target your guys. So let's say if, if the spell was just, gate, your creature's gain protection from blue and black. Like, that's not even that great of a spell, but it can trips if they cast a thing. They don't have to cast a thing that targets your guy. If you realize this isn't going to be that great, they cast a board wipe or whatever, just cycle this card and you don't have to worry about it. The downside is nothing. It's such a good magic card. Uh, kind of a spiky card. Not a lot of people like it because just throw this in the 99, but it's so worth buying for $6. It's, just ignore the uncommon symbol and you won't feel as bad. Yeah, it's also, it's a very high power level card. Like, such a high power, like... It you is just, a C yeah. You can also just proactively go. Yeah, no countering my spells this turn. Yeah, exactly. And then you can just combo off. Like, yeah. So you can either play this in super high power levels. You can even play it in medium power levels where you just want to get a, a sexy two for one. If you like blowouts, this is a sweet one. Oh, it's, it's a one mana blowout. It's such a blowout. It feels so. It feels so good. Everyone calls it the green cryptic command. <laughs> Counter spell draw card. Yeah, for one mana. Oof, jeez. This next one is a card. I feel like everyone's kicking themselves for not buying sooner, but it's Rycroft suggesting. Mox Amber, which is at $31. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say no. I don't think Mox Amber is that crazy or good. It Obviously, it always has, there's always the, my commander costs one mana, it's good in that deck. Yeah, there are the situations. I don't think I want to spend $31 in this card, because most decks, it's bad. And especially if your commander starts, if your commander hits four and up, I'm I'm out. Yeah, if your commander's four up, I think this card is like pretty bad, unless you're, uh, you know, like a Joyra. Obviously, there's exceptions to everything I'm of saying. Of course. But... If your commander's like four plus, I'm done. I don't want it. I'm gonna say no overall. But this could be this is a really fun card sometimes. But overall, don't think I should buy this for thirty-one dollars. This is like two thirds of a Chromox. I think Chromox is fifty or sixty or something like that. That's a way more broadly playable card. Yeah, Mox Amber is just it's a good card in specific decks only. And it's real bad, real bad in, in other decks. And I think a lot of the time you won't even miss it. You, I, you won't. You really, you really won't, especially if you're playing in a low to mid power level. This card is so replaceable. I'll take a, a Signets are just going to be just as good most of the time in yeah. those power levels. Right. Sometimes you get a boost, but not often enough for us to say yes. Number 12, Snakey Snake, Alhamaret's Archive, which is $5. I thought it was more than that. Yeah, it's pretty cheap. Um, but I'm still going to say... You know, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. It is worth spending $5 to get this card. Just don't throw it in your deck. Don't go like, all right, here we go. This random deck, here it is. If you have a ton of card draw, and especially if you're doing life gain card draw, boom, that's awesome. This is going to work great for you. It's just not, it's not super generic. It is a, it is very specific. Yeah, maybe the question is more like, you're saying, hey, should I buy this Elhammer Arts Archive? I have a deck in my going. And we're saying, yeah, it's probably worth it. $5. It's just so cheap. This card is, this card does have more than $5 worth of upside all the time. You can it's, get... It's kind of a, uh, it's not the highest power level card though. I think one of the things I really, uh, the deck I really like this card for, like extra like it for, is the red deck that doesn't have a lot of card draw and you have those discard draws. Oh. So now you, now you, you know, you faithless looting, draw four, discard two. That's all the, and it, if you stack up like, so between, let's say you make that all your card draw, and then you put that gamble in to find it, and you try and get this in the field. It makes those so much better. That's where I really like this card. You're just describing that dragon tribal deck I had. Yep. That's what I did. I felt amazing. I felt like a genius when I was storming off with those like cathartic reunions. <laughs> yeah, it was like that's that's where I really like this card. Uh, overall, still just good. Yes, yes, yes for five dollars. Next, uh, Melanus suggests Lotus Petal, and it is thirteen dollars for me. This is the easiest no ever. I don't even think it's not even remotely close to me. This card just Dang, not even close. No, this card doesn't go. Okay, there. This is way too narrow. This is a card that if it's not in the deck that's going to be super competitive and using it, it sucks. It is though. It is a bad card in a lot of in almost all decks. Oh, see, I like I I have been a fan of Lotus Petal in the few decks I've played it in. Maybe it's just that there's a subset of commanders who absolutely freaking love this card, and it will never be what it's supposed to be, which is you discard a card to add a mana. It's not that in those decks. Uh, I think, honestly, any deck where it's not discard a card to add a mana, I would say yes. Like, we're talking, like, even, like, I like it in Skullbriar. There's, like, Teshar, Joyra, anything that says whenever you cast an artifact, get an effect, artifacts in the graveyard. I would say yes for those like heavy synergy decks. If you can cantrip off this or do anything with it at all, 
other than just Adam Anna, I'm in yes. Yeah, that's my problem with this card is it's not a, it's just, it's, it goes in very, very, very specific decks and it's, other than that, this card really stinks. Oh, I think it's sweet. It's such a sweet one. Like, I don't want to spend $13 to get a Lotus Petal for, ah, it's just To not... me, that doesn't feel bad. Oh, that feels Like, I, I need one for a deck and I was going to buy one. I'm like, yeah, $13, that's okay. I mean, this card's only going to go up. I think it's because you put your wheel spinny decks where you can afford to where you have so much card advantage in it that you can afford to play this. This card is real bad when you're, especially if you don't draw card advantage with this, it feels awful because now, now you have just two for one yourself to cast a spell, use one more mana. Oh God. Oh, so, I know. So I'm on team Lotus Petal. I say yes. And then Joe says no. No, no. So I have mixed reviews from the different nerds. Yeah, You've heard both sides. Not interested in that card. Uh, 14 OP is the username. And they say, what about Liliana Dreadhorde General, which is $28. I thought this was a little more pricey so this is going to be a little less interesting. I think this is a slam dunk. Yes, this is going to be one of the best cards in your deck if you care about those that first little static line. This is, so if you're with thinking, uh, you have an Aristocrats deck. Yeah. And you're thinking, hmm, should I get a Meat Hook Massacre or a Liliana? <sighs> it is the easiest Liliana Dreadhorde General. It is cheaper and it is a hundred, it, it might be, ooh, I don't know, let's say like three, four times better for an Aristocrats deck. Liliana is one of the best six drops in the format, especially for low to mid power level. This card's insane. And if we're saying CDH is its own thing, even low to high, even in your higher power decks, if this is your curve chopper, one of your only five spells that cost more than four mana, this is doing serious work. I have this in some more competitive decks and it freaking rocks. Yeah, Liliana Dreadhawk General is an amazing commander card. Worth twenty eight dollars, probably. Uh, well, maybe it gets interesting around forty five dollars. That's. I was gonna say worth worth thirty eight. Yeah, I, I, if I when it's up at forty, is it the more interesting discussion of if it's worth it? Twenty eight dollars, one hundred percent worth it. Yes, if if you're on maybe a really tight budget, check off your Midnight Hunter or your Midnight Reapers and your Grim Horror Specs first. But this is like, this is better than those cards. All right, next Fluffy Kitty suggests Prismatic Vista, which is twenty eight dollars. <laughs> now I put this here as a trap because it's a no because I wanted to mention something else all of the MH2 fetches the enemy fetches are like cheaper than this they're they, about this price or they're cheaper or they're this price yes it's not even close get those enemy fetches over getting this uh, Prismatic Vista Prismatic Vista it, this is a, it reminds me of which one was it like Dark Confidant you have to start approaching that really 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 high power level where you don't care about synergy and it's just maybe a two color deck where you don't want to play off color fetches then you're like hey i'm disciplined i only ever do it then hey yeah yeah prismatic fist that will do it so i'm just gonna say yes i'm gonna amend what you said no. and i'm gonna say yes asterix you already have all of the fetch lands that cost about the same price as long as you don't need any of those for anything then you can buy prismatic vista no i'm just saying no prismatic vista overall not worth it it's so it's so niche it's a it's a fine card, and there's... Is well, there... Fetch Land's not niche, but this is. I mean, if you're in a two-color deck, it's just... It's a dual land. You just find either half. It's one of those uh, pathways. Yeah, but the thing is that... The, my, my issue is that not... Like, you. I guess you have the asterisk. So if you're yeah. about, you have to have all the Fetch Land. So, you're saying, you're let's saying, just say no, because most people don't own all the Fetch Land. You're saying no, get the Fetch Lands first. And I'm saying yes, if you have the Fetch Lands. We're saying the same thing. I, yeah, I guess. I mean, I still don't even... Like, you still don't even really need this. I'd better spend $28 on something else than... Prismatic Vista, it's it's one of the it's such a tiny improvement. So would you buy so like power level wise, you're in a blue red deck. Would you get Arid Mesa? Yeah. What? It's like it's so close to the same thing. No, and it's I, very close. Yeah, but Arid Mesa is so much better, and it's gonna hold more value, and it's just gonna be like there's so many. I don't know if it's gonna hold more value. Who knows when they're gonna print Prismatic Vista again? Arid Mesa will hold more value than a Prismatic Vista. I'll call it now. It, the, the fetch lines are just and unless unless some miracle banning happens that uh, I've been praying for for the past ten years, yeah. which isn't coming, then I think that Arid Mesa will hold the value. But when they get banned, I will make fun of you. I would be so happy. Be you good. couldn't make fun of me. I, I would be I would be doing like jumping like heel clicks. Oh, like that's, the... that's how happy I would be. <laughs> I you, you couldn't. I'd be so happy if fetches were banned. All oh right. God! All right, guess what. The video's over. Do, it is. Do the shout-outs before we get to the tidbit about our lives. Uh, special shout-outs to all of our patrons. Love you all as much as you can without making you uncomfortable. Thank you for helping us live our dream. You guys were all scrolling on screen. Seriously, thank you again. Appreciate every one of you. Now, if you're saying, live your dream, what? I didn't know dreams were involved. Then you better head over to the TCG Player link. That's where dreams are made of for us. Because when you click the link and buy the cards like you would anyway, starting with the link, 
gives us extra money in our pockets of no extra charge to you. So it's yeah. basically the perfect scenario. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you, you buy the card you were going to buy anyway, the Magic the Gathering card. And we get a kickback. You're supporting the channel while supporting your addiction to cardboard crack. It's perfect. We have a Discord. Come in, DM us, ask questions, tag us, throw memes in there, chat with people. There's like 4,000 people. It's not a small Discord. So if you want a community of people to connect with, this is like a really good opportunity. Also, that's how you get. Um, that's how you can get involved in this video. Yeah. We add everybody uh, on Sunday, some, like every two, three weeks, and we say, hey, throw the cards you want to hear us talk about and tell you if it's worth it. And that's how we got all these. Yeah, 15 people just got free shout outs. Tidbit about our life. Tidbit about our lives. Definitely my turn. I don't understand why I've been getting sick so much this year. I never get sick. I have I get sick once a year. And I, this is like my third time being sick this year. I don't know what's happening. But I do know that when I was little, all I ever wanted was to be sick. When I was in like elementary school and high school, I was like, geez, I hope I throw up tomorrow so I don't have to go to school. And now it's like, I have the sniffles. I'm really inconvenienced. I can't do my work. Uh, yeah, BZ's really shut down by illness. Um, I... When it's bad, I am. I mean, most of the time, it's I'll just go through it. Well, yeah, but like, so like, uh, I guess I'm just more comparing. It's like illness slows me down a little bit, uh, unless it's real bad. Then, it, then it's, I'm in bed and I don't come out. But you, you, you tend to be like, like I think we have the same sickness. It's like it's just affecting you so much more. I'm having it. You only had it for like two days, didn't you? That's what I'm saying. That's just like day five for but, me. But, but that's what I'm saying. I usually fight off illnesses faster, and they don't hold me down. Yeah, I don't even know. Why I'm not that saying is. you're strong. I'm, it's not a strong, weak thing. It's a. I'm it's an immune like, system. What thing. the heck? I thought my immune system was dope. Maybe I, I just. I think your immune system fights off things a lot slower than mine. Apparently, I maybe it's like. I can prevent it, but once I get it, I'm like the immune system's like, what even is this? We don't get stuff. You also, know? um. One thing about you getting sick before we go is that um, because of quarantine, you haven't been exposed to as many um, illnesses. So you know you're, what? You, you're not blaming building, the quarantine. You're not building up uh, not an perfect. immunity to as many. Like like if you're around more people, yeah, that's true. More bugs, and you're fighting them off and building immunities. This then. is your daily dose of immunology lessonology. Yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert on this. That's more of just like that's that is the most basic version of that. Oh, we're not experts. I just said the word lessonology. Uh, yeah, so enjoy your lessonology. Uh, peace out, Tribe Scout.